everyone. So in this video, I'm going to share with you a story on my first successful hunt for a Columbia blacktail buck here in California. Yeah, as you can see, here's the skull of the buck that I got this year. Two by two buck. This was a solo hunt on public land, so you know, this is what you can expect. Yeah, before I get into the footage of this hunt, I just want to share a bit about my background experience in hunting and uh, the journey has led me to finally succeed on my own. Yeah, if you're a new hunter, I hope uh, hearing about my experience gives you an idea of what it takes to be successful. Um, of course, everyone's experience can be different. Some people find success in their first season. Some people take multiple years. There's a lot of factors, you know, your fitness level, whether or not you have a mentor, how much outdoor experience you have prior, and you know, just how lucky you are. So a little bit on my hunting background. I didn't grow up hunting. I didn't know any other hunters. So I had to figure out a lot of things on my own. And rather than wait to find a hunting mentor that could take me out hunting, I decided to just start hunting solo. Now over the past few years, I have met some other hunters and I've hunted with them occasionally, but I've grown to enjoy solo hunting. So yeah, as a result, um, it kind of became a personal goal of mine to succeed on a solo hunt for a Columbia blacktail buck. Now I want to share a brief summary of my deer hunting experience over the past three years. I started hunting for blacktail bucks in 2021. That was my first season. So in 2021, I was hunting with only my bow as I didn't have a rifle yet. I got one stock in on a tiny two by two buck. Like he was barely legal. His, his forks were like an inch. I got within 50 yards of him and he spooked and ran off. And other than that, I was just seeing does. So for the most part, 2021, I was just focused on learning my gear, getting comfortable backpacking into certain areas, learning to use the map, so navigating, uh, just being out on my own in the woods, camping, a lot of just outdoor skills in general that I did not know or have prior to getting into hunting. Now in 2022, I got a rifle and I hunted the archery season with my bow and then once general season came around, I swapped over to the rifle. Now in my 2022 season, I did manage to find some bucks in velvet during the archery season, but I could never get an opportunity stocking on them. Often when I would see them, I would turn them up in one spot and then the next time I go there, they're not there anymore. And then, uh, yeah, towards the end of the season, end of general season, I did manage to finally see a buck come out during the last light on the last weekend of the season. He had a pretty big body, but it was getting dark. I was trying to set up my rifle on the side of a rocky hill and, and I was tr also trying to verify whether or not he was legal because like I said, I could see the black patch of hair on his forehead that's just like specific to bucks. I could see he had a bigger body than the other deer, but it was too dark for me to verify his antlers. So as I was setting up, I, I could not get comfortable enough to make a good shot. And when I finally did, he walked off with two other deer. So I missed my chance on that. And then he didn't show up the next day. 2022 season, I was really focused on trying to learn and understand the behavior of these deer as it changes throughout the hunting season. So in the archery season, when the deer are in velvet, their behavior is going to be different than in general season after they've shed their velvet and then towards the end of general season, once the deer are approaching like their pre-rut phase, their behavior starts to change a little bit too. And overall, in 2021 and 2022, I hunted every other weekend, basically whenever I could, and I put in about 18 to 20 days of hunting with maybe three to four days of preseason scouting. So that's just to give you an idea of uh, how much effort I had to put in to finally like be successful this year. But yeah, as for this year, 2023, this was my third hunting season here in California, going after blacktail bucks. I spent four days scouting this year, nine days hunting with my bow during the archery season, and about three days hunting the general season before I was successful. But overall, this was, this year was a very exciting season for me. I managed to find a lot of bucks during the archery season. I had multiple stocks. The closest I got was about 30 yards from a bedded buck, but it was during a weekend with a heat wave. I was not confident that he was still in his spot and then I, I was just losing my patience waiting in the sun. I decided to just chuck a pebble hoping he would stand up and I could get a shot but uh, that never works and yeah I just lost my patience and it didn't play out. I let the heat get to me, lost my patience, tried to get him to stand up by throwing a pebble at him and then he busted out of there. First he didn't know what was going on. He was circling back and he, he was 20 yards away from me but he saw me I was trying to draw back and then he booked oh my god I'm dumb 
but yeah, it didn't work out. But you know, the archery season, I view it as a uh, time for me to scout and learn uh, more about these deer. So during that archery season, I was really able to learn the areas that these bucks were feeding in, where they were getting their water, uh, the travel routes that they were typically taking in the morning and evening to go from their bedding area to their feeding areas. As I've read, blacktail bucks aren't as patternable as other deer like whitetail, but uh, you kind of get a general sense of where they like to be. They won't take the same routes every day, but it did give me an idea of like what area to focus on. So come general season, I had a good idea where I could find a buck. And I don't know if the one that I killed ended up being one of the bucks that I was watching and stocking in on during the archery season or not, because there were multiple two by twos out there and they were in velvet, so it looked a bit different. The weekend that I managed to get my deer, I got into camp on Friday evening, early Saturday morning. I hiked in the dark into the vantage point that I wanted to be at. So around 6.20 a.m. I managed to glass up a deer. I could see the dark patch on his forehead. It was still kind of low light so I could not verify his antlers. So I was fumbling around to set up my spotting scope, verify his antlers, and then set up my rifle. Once I saw that he was a legal buck, he had uh, forked antlers on both sides. I was trying to just set up my rifle as quickly as I could. And I was pretty lucky that he just stayed there. I think he might have heard me or had a sense that there's something in my direction because he was staring right at me, but he didn't move. and. Uh, yeah, now we can get into footage of uh, my hunt. Holy shit. I just shot a buck. Two by two. Got on video. I shot him, he ran downhill. It looked like a good shot though. Maybe like upper lung, somewhere in the lungs though. Didn't look too far back or anything. I felt good with that shot, but man. Whew. Yo, I didn't, you know, I thought I would be pretty calm. You know, like when I shot my wild pig, got the real calm, but finally finding a legal buck on public land, my god. Yo. Oh man, that buck fever is real. <laughs> I'm still shaking. I'm gonna start packing up and walking over there. Just trying to find this buck. It's been like 10 minutes since, 10, 15 minutes since I shot him. So I'm gonna start hiking over there. By the time I get there, it'll be like 20, 25 minutes from when I shot him. Should be a good amount of time wait. I rewatched my footage. It looked like a good shot. It looked like right behind the sh shoulder. I just saw my buck. Oh man. Oh man, I knew it was a good shot. He didn't go far. That was like 20 yards downhill. All right here, here he is. Oh man. Look at that, that's a perfect shot. Wow. Finally got my first buck. California black tailed deer right here. 12 days of hunting, nine days in archery season, three days in general season. Actually, or is it 13? I don't know, whatever. Hunted general season, I think like three days. <sighs> Man. Now the real, the hard work begins. Gotta gut them, field dress them, pack them out. Attached. Time to start field dressing. Should be for me 40 minutes or something like that. About halfway done. Got the heart, liver, rear, right quarters. Gotta do the other half of this deer. Get the back straps out, the head. Here, I'm done butchering this deer. Gutted him, field dressed him. Got all the quarters out, back strap, 
tenderloins, neck meat, organs. I'm gonna pack up my bag and I'm gonna start hiking out of here. Got my pack loaded up. I feel so heavy. It's gonna be a painful pack out, but I don't feel like doing two trips, so I'm trying to get it done in one heavy ass bag, which is also super awkward and comfortable weight distribution. I'm almost out. Yeah, my pack was way too heavy. I had to drop maybe two front quarters, empty out some of my gear. My legs are cramping up, hiking up this hill. So I had to lighten up my bag a bit. I'm almost out. Now I'll come back in and get the rest of the meat and my other stuff. All right, just made it back in. Grab the rest of the meat and hiking out. All right, well, I made it back to my car. Just cleaned up a bit. Back at my camp and uh, yeah, I'm just starting to pack up, get ready, leave. I got all the meat in the cooler that's cooling off. I'm gonna pick up some more ice when I get out of here and then uh, I'm gonna find somebody to co sign my deer tag. All right, I finally got my deer tag validated and now I can drive home. It's a long day. Finally home, got the deer head in the freezer. I'm uh, yeah, just getting all the meat into the fridge now. I'm gonna put all the meat in the garbage bag so it doesn't drip in the fridge. Got all our meat in the fridge. Process it all tomorrow. Good morning everybody. So it's Sunday right now. I'm gonna start butchering up this deer for the hind quarters. I'm gonna portion that out into the steaks, package and freeze those. The shanks from both legs, I'm just gonna debone that. Set that aside, I'll either use it for some slow cook recipes or use it to make some ground venison. The shoulders, I'm gonna debone that and uh, set that aside, same thing. Um, slow cook recipes or possibly uh, ground venison. Neck meat, I'll probably grind up. The rib meat and various other trimmings, I gotta trim the fat off that and grind that up. I always hear that deer fat is very waxy, so I'm gonna remove as much of the fat off the deer as I can. Back strap, gonna portion that up, package and freeze those for steaks. Tenderloins, package and freeze that as is. Uh, got the heart and liver, clean those up, package and freeze those. Yeah, I think that covers all of the deer. So yeah, time to get started. On the legs. So as I work through this hindquarter, I'm just packaging the meat sections I take off into Ziploc bags and putting in the fridge, just trying to keep it as cold as I can throughout this whole process. I still got a little bit more on the hindquarter and then uh, get to work on the next quarter. All right, there we go. It's the last bit of meat off the this one hindquarter. Yeah, I'm gonna keep the bones and make some broth with that. And make some venison pho. And get started on the next quarter. All right, so right now I'm working on one of the front quarters. This is the one that the bullet went through, so there's a lot of bloodshot meat. Um, I'm just trimming all that way and doing the best I can to uh, salvage as much meat off this front quarter as possible. And now I'm just working on some of the trimmings. I want to get it cleaned up, remove any dirt, leaves, and twigs and things, and uh, trim off all the fat. The legs, the quarters, are they're pretty clean, so I'm Fine, I'm leaving that in the fridge while I clean up this meat. Here's all the rib meat trimmings cleaned up. Couldn't have asked for a better shot. The heart stayed intact. Took out both lungs and just a little bit of the liver. So yeah, I got some organ meat. All right, now I'm gonna clean up the back straps, portion those out, get them in bags. Um, still got two legs left to bone out. So yeah, I'm gonna finish that up tonight. Right, so I'm finally done deboning all the quarters, cleaning up some of the various cuts I took off the deer. Um, got everything into Ziploc bags in the fridge. Tomorrow, I will portion things out more and freeze them. That should be it for the deer until I get some pig fat and then I can uh, use some of the meat to make some ground venison. All right, it's early in the morning. I'm up again. Time to continue processing this deer. I'm gonna start packaging some of the meat. Oh, here's all the meat. I got a portion in them out and package and freeze them. All right, so split 
up the back straps into four pieces. They're about 1.4 pounds each. Gonna put them in a vacuum sealed bag now. Seal it, make sure it's closed tight. There you go, back strap. All right, finally done packaging all the meat and putting it all in the freezer. I've uh, organized it so I set aside the meat I plant into grind up. Um, I still froze it because I don't have time to grind it this week, but yeah, yeah I'm done for now. I'm done, done processing these deer. I can clean up and uh, relax. Here's all the meat in this freezer. Got the bones here, skull that I gotta take care of, drop it off to have it clean this, this week. Yeah, some black back strap here, nice heart. 